Right, in this video we will discuss the depth of market in further detail and we'll look at how to read the order flow on the DOM and we can also go through a trading drill slash exercise to practice, get used to trading order flow in the DOM, know what to look for and just to train your brain, train those motor skills to get good at trading or scalping from the DOM. And again, if you haven't seen part one of this order flow series, make sure you check out that video in the description, but we'll get into this in further detail now. So reading the order flow is where we'll start. So obviously we have a DOM here. I'm going to explain on a whiteboard how to read order flow using the DOM then we'll expand on that and how to apply that using the trading and scalping drill afterwards so let's jump over to the whiteboard and here we will discuss how to use and how to read order flow using the DOM okay so this is what I look at when I'm trading when I'm scalping this is how I'm reading order flow in a very simple manner okay so here we have a visual crude visual representation of a DOM right so we've got the bid column and the ask column obviously as we come in the first video the bid these are buyers lining up at each price to buy and these are sellers on the ask lining up at each price to sell so we've got the price levels on the side here just to keep it simple one two three four five and here we imagine we have five buyers on the bid at two dollars and five at one dollars but then on the ask we have 10 sellers at three 12 at four and 14 at five dollars so just by looking at this, like I mentioned in the first video, the way that the markets move is that if market executors choose to cross the spread and consume the passive orders on the bid or the ask, that will cause price to tick up or tick down. So if the sellers here decide to execute aggressively and take out that, they need to execute five contracts to be able to tick price down to have current price rest at $2. So they have to consume that level to move things down. In general, the more contracts that are on each level, the harder it is or the thicker it is for price to move through those levels. So in this kind of market here, say I just jumped in a trade, I'm long at $2, right? So I'm, I'm going long from this price and then I'm like, oh, damn, there's 10 sellers above me, 12 at $4 and 14 at $5. And there's only five contracts on my price and five behind me. In this type of situation, immediately I'd think, okay, being long is a bad idea here. People are clearly more wanting to sell here than they are buying. So it may indicate that price is currently at a premium. So we want to push price back down. Sellers are wanting to sell. Buyers are not looking to buy at this price level. So what I want to see if I am long in this situation, I would rather want to see something a bit more like this is a bit more balanced a bit more favorable so if I'm long at this point here at two dollars and I can see these sellers here what I'm wanting to look for is number one are more people joining the bid at my level at two dollars say it goes from 15 I go long it goes from 15 and that jumps up to 25 that would support the idea that okay we got buyers wanting to come in here and push price up hence I can get my few ticks profit and jump out we got people jumping in here and I'd also want to see the same thing behind me and at further prices below imagine there were further prices below but I'd want to see more buyers jumping in behind me as well to support the idea of buyers wanting to come in and go long okay and what I'd be wanting to see is I want to see these levels on the ask start to trade out so we could see uh, that number 10 drop down to 5 for example and then the sellers above starting to trickle away as well thinking okay buyers are coming in strong I'm jumping out we see these levels start to trickle down to lower numbers and that would give more reason for me to want to stay long, be less resistance above for price to tick upwards, less contracts to be consumed for price to move up, therefore supporting my trade idea of going long from this point and vice versa from the other side if that was to happen I don't need to go through and draw this for you but if the same situation was to happen if I'm short that would be what I'm looking for is to look for are uh, number one who's in control at the moment are there more buyers than sellers in these near term levels and if I am going long are buyers coming in behind me and at my price level and are sellers moving out the way so that's one very simple way I would start to read order flow if I'm scalping on the DOM the next thing I want to do here is say I'm in a trade say I bought here at one dollar say I bought at one dollar and maybe there's 12 contracts there so I bought at one dollar we have an uptick to two dollars and then maybe here on the ask we have nine contracts maybe 12 above nothing too crazy all right so it's fairly balanced but we got eight and nine here and I'm long from one dollar and say I'm wanting price to tick up I'm already one tick in profit okay I'm one tick in profit at two dollars and what's happening here is maybe I see okay this number trades in and out so it goes from nine 
down to four, for example. So it's starting to trade out. I'm thinking, cool. Yep, looks like we'll push through this level. I can get another tick's worth of profit. But say it ticks down to four, but then all of a sudden that number four refreshes up and suddenly jumps to 10. Okay, and we're still at the same price, mind you. We're still at $2. We're trading out at three, but it jumps to 10. Okay, and we keep going. We're stuck at this price level, and that starts to jump up. Now that's up at 15, and it's going back and forth, back and forth, but the ask here is starting to increase. And, you know, I'm still long from $1, currently one tick in profit, but the ask here is starting to increase at $3. I'm wanting to take profit up here at $4, but the ask here is starting to increase Order flow is shifting. We're starting to see more sellers pile in at $3. Well, then I'd probably want to cut the trade and get my exit there. One tick profit. Get out before order flow shifts. Can see a little change in behaviors here in market participants with sellers coming in to stand in at this level. So although we were ticking up, we're ticking up. Once we got to this two, three dollar mark here, sellers start to pile in. That level starts to reload, 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 keeps coming back and increasing in number. I'm gonna want to pull the plug on the trade. Okay, keep in mind I'm just scalping for a few ticks at a time in and out of the market. I'm gonna want to pull the tip plug on a trade if order flow starts to shift against my long trade and take that out with a one dollar take profit tick even if my take profit was up at four dollars i'm reading the order flow to tell me okay should i hold this trade any longer or is market behavior changing so that's one thing about order flow trading that i personally really like is we're not trading based off arbitrary take profit targets and stop lock ta stop loss targets we are looking at the behavior of the buyers and sellers on the book seeing where they're starting to show interest or where they're losing interest and determining our trade decisions based off of that. So although I had a take profit up here at $4, because sellers start to pile in here at $3, I choose to close the trade out at one tick profit, you know, and then say then that price gets consumed and then we have sellers starting to pile in pushing price back down to the downside and then I can say thank goodness I exited that bloody trade so that's a little idea of how I'm reading order flow okay very crude very simple but that's literally what I'm doing when I'm scalping order flow just keeping it very simple and reading the book like that and determining where sellers are wanting to come in and engage where buyers are willing to come in and engage and like I said if long I'm looking to see buyers come in and support at levels that I've entered at and levels behind me and I'm also looking for sellers to either be consumed or to be standing out the way. So I want, you know, want to see those numbers decreasing, 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 so we can easier push through and tick up through these levels. Now, another example I want to show you, this comes to take profit targets and stop loss targets. For example, is say again, say I'm long from $1. Okay, so I'm long from here. I've bought here and you know there's maybe nine on the queue here and 12 here and my take profit target again is we could say up at five dollars this time so i want to take profit up at five dollars right so we're currently at two dollars we've got three contracts here and uh say my take profit target there's maybe eight contracts and so nothing too crazy say this number here was maybe a six at the time okay so i'm long from one dollar we've ticked up to two dollars and there's not too many contracts above me my take profit targets at five dollars so i'm thinking cool um this trade looks like it should be sweet to push through to that level and i can take profit at a four tick profit target but then all of a sudden watching the order flow just in front of my take profit there at five dollars Say that at $4, that number goes from 6 all of a sudden to 25 Okay, well now I'm thinking, all right, sellers are starting to load up in front of my take profit target. That means it's going to be harder for price to push through that level to reach my take profit target. So instead of having my take profit target up at 5 I need to adapt to the changing market conditions and come in front of that larger order and put that there. So although I'll be taking a smaller win, um, it's still a two-tick win, but I'm wanting to adapt to market conditions because I don't want to have my take profit target resting behind a larger amount of sellers on the book because price will have to work harder to get through that level. And also there's a good chance if sellers are stepping in at $4, um, sellers might want to join the queue and start to push price down from $4, therefore leaving my profit target behind and I never got to make money on the trade. But instead, since I'm adapting to market conditions as it's happening, reading the order book, reading the order flow, 25 contracts come stand in front of where my uh, original take profit target was I adapt pull my take profit down to three dollars there's only three contracts there on the offer so odds are we can push through that I take profit here before those 25 sellers engage with the market that's a simplistic way of reading the order flow on the book 
There are more tools we can use to read the order flow, which we'll get into in more detail in later episodes. But this is the first thing I wanted to show you just to get an idea of how to read order flow using the DOM, using these passive orders, just to get an idea of market sentiment in the moment. Now, we'll get into a trading drill we can use to actually practice this. And it's very similar to the way I actually trade on stream as well, scalping from the DOM. So we'll go into the scalping drill now. And this is where you can really start to put this into practice. And um, of course, practice is in a simulated environment. I'm not obviously not financial advice trading is risky business um, but this is just a little drill that you can use it's derived from drills I've taken with when I was learning this as well um, but this will help to kind of help you spot what to look for and how to trade and how to scalp off the DOM so I'll break it down in the trading platform in a second so it can make more sense but we'll just do a quick overview of what the scalping drill will be okay first of all you're going to need a dom plus level 2 data i'm going to show you on top step x um, trading this drill so i'll show you that on top step x but any system that we can have access to a dom and level 2 data and a simulation account or a simulation profile so you're not actually risking anything because you are just practicing at this point in time is good so a dom plus level 2 data and then you're going to need a access to a 30 second chart plus the indicator volume profile visible range. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second. I'll explain what that is and why we're going to use it shortly. But this is what's required to do this drill. Now the rules here are, number one, we're going to be trading the S&P 500 ES futures during the NY session ideally, okay, during the more liquid session so we can make use of the higher liquidity for reading order flow. We're going to look for buys or sells on retests of high volume nodes or high volume areas, which I'll discuss in a second. We'll go into more depth than that in a later episode, but I'll quickly cover it before uh, leaving you guys on this video. Now we're gonna enter only using buy and sell limit orders on the DOM, no market executions, okay? When you're scalping in this way, scalping from the DOM, ideally you wanna just be using limit orders so you don't sacrifice the spread. And you're profiting from the spread if you are correct on your trade. So only using buy and sell limit orders on the DOM, I'll show you how to do that as well. And we're gonna set up a bracket, okay, for a 10 tick stop loss and a five ticks take profit. 10 tick stop loss is just there as a safety rail. You never wanna take a full stop out. A 10 tick stop loss for a safety rail and 5 tick take profit for ideal situations. And we're going to use those order flow principles discussed earlier to either take profit at or near 5 ticks. So do your best to get close to that number if the order flow allows and cut losing trades at or near break even based on the order flow. And we're going to stop when you reach plus 300 for the day or negative 300 for the day. So let's go set this up on a chart and I'll show you what this looks like. And then we then we'll cover some things to look out for and things to train your brain on next. So stick around for that. But let's just jump onto the charts to show you what you need to set up. All right. So here you have Top Step X, this platform I'm personally using. Here's a DOM, simple DOM, just with the bids, the asks. All right. That's all there. Then we have a regular trading chart here on S&P 500, and that is on the 30 second time frame. Time frames and charts are basically irrelevant, but for the purpose of this trading drill, we'll need it as a reference point. 30 second chart, trading DOM open. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is under indicators, look for volume profile visible range. Okay, so you add that to your chart. I've got that added here. And then you can copy my settings if you like. It'll look a little bit different when you add it. But here are my settings. Pause the video, screenshot, copy it, whatever you need to do. Um, this is my settings I have for the volume profile visible range. And I will explain what this does. So the volume profile visible range basically just shows, based on price, not time, based on price, which levels of price have the most participation or interest or market executions from market participants. So the higher areas here where price, where these nodes stick out are where the most transactions are occurring. So you can see that delineated by this red line, the point of control. You also have other smaller ones on the outliers here. So you're up at five, four, three, four, seven, you can see there's an outlier there sticks out. So any area that significantly sticks out like this is a high volume node. So we're going to want to have these on the charts as a reference point. But what you're doing basically is if price is above the high volume node, you're going to want to look for retests and buy just above the high volume node and then look at order flow to determine if price is going to bounce from that level or if it's going to push through. You're going to enter a trade long at the high volume node on the DOM, so say 5346, so I'd want to enter a trade long there, okay, so I'd click, remember to place a limit order, you click on the left hand side and that will place your limit order there, obviously I'm not going to do it right now because this is my top step evaluation, but limit order here, get triggered, make sure you've got your take profit and stop loss automatically put in, 
10 ticks to stop loss, 5 tick take profit. And then vice versa for the other side, where down below you're going to want to take a retest and sell from those high volume areas underneath for a continuation. Remember, we're only looking for 5 ticks max profit. And then using those principles from order flow that we looked at earlier in the video, you're going to watch the DOM once you're in the trade, if you're long, you're going to watch the DOM to see if buyers are adding to the queue behind you and at your level, are sellers moving out the way or at least getting traded out? If yes, then keep holding and watch the order flow at your levels. See if you can get out with that as close to five ticks take profit as possible. Um, if the order flow starts to shift against you and sellers start to stand in and buyers are getting consumed, then try and get out with a smaller profit or at or near break even. You never want to take a full 10 tick stop out. All right, the stop loss is just there as a safety rail for any wild move moves but you want to get out at or near break even most of the time so now things to look out for so what you're going to look, want to look out for with this trading drill is to try and train yourself not to hold and hope but get in the habit of cutting losers quickly or taking profit when the order flow changes against you so remember what we looked at earlier with the order flow illustration on the whiteboard same thing all right so if order flow changes against you you want to trade those facts. Don't trade feelings. Don't sit and hold the trade thinking, okay, but it might push through. It might push through. If order flow shifts against you and those sellers start to step in, if you're long, you're going to want to cut the trade or at least get out with a small profit. Now see if you can try and spot participants building on the bid or offer before you enter a trade to further support your trade idea before entering. So if you're wanting to go long, before price comes back to retest the high volume node, which we'll again discuss more in detail in the next video, one thing you can try and see if you can do, it's not an absolute requirement for a trade, but see if you can spot buyers starting to jump in before price approaches that level to retest. Once we start to approach the high volume level, are buyers starting to jump in behind you before you even execute your trade or join the queue and vice versa for a sell. Like I said before, ideally you should never take a full stop out. That 10 tick stop loss that we mentioned in the previous slide, that 10 tick stop loss is just there as a safety rail to stop any massive swings in price, you know, news events out of nowhere or random volatility injections. That's just there to keep safeguard your account and stop you from taking huge losses, you know, on a whim. So you never want to take a 10 tick stop loss. Always try and get out at or near a break even or you know a few ticks losses ideally keep those losers smaller than the five tick full take profit is the best case scenario and just run that until you reach plus 300 or negative 300 and really try and train yourself to spot those shifts in order flow and train yourself with that discipline to cut losers quickly or to even take profit quickly if order flow shifts against you and just grind away at those ticks until you reach that profit target or the loss limit there so this is very similar to the way i trade on stream and in my opinion is a good way to train yourself to spot those simple changes in the book and get those higher probability trades and also to manage your trading better based on actual order flow rather than sitting and praying so hope that helps guys next week's episode will expand more again reading order flow using the dom and market executions and we'll also look into volume as well in next week's episode subscribe for that like the video if you want to see more and also catch me on stream if you want to see this type of trading in action if that'll help you as well 2 30 p.m eastern time monday to friday so check it out there guys otherwise catch in the next one